so I guess well, what's important with geometry is starting from the very beginning. Um, in our um, you know, intro song about geometry, how we opened it up was um, geometry. What is geometry? It's a study of lines, 2D shapes and 3D shapes. I, I, I guess I, I, I can show you our intro, video, our intro video to geometry, which will cover everything that I plan to cover or as, or as much as I can. Geometry, what is geometry? It's a study of lines, 2D shapes, and 3D shapes. You'll learn transformations, their properties, and then some proofs. Transverses of parallel lines and small doses of trigonometry. There's a huge chunk of time on triangles. Are they congruent or similar? Dive deep into circles and then with 3D figures. Geometry. What is geometry? It's a study of lines, 2D shapes, and 3D shapes. That is it. So for, for geometry, what I'm going to do this time is to go into points, lines, planes, and angles, a little introduction to that, and talk about uh, transformations and, and uh, tying it to algebra in any way that I can. Okay. So today we'll be mostly doing the basics of geometry while exploring some intersections between geometry and algebra just to kind of ease the the transition between them and then we can we can just keep going. So the the most important thing in geometry is um let's oh, so here I drew like a line, a 2D shape and a 3D shape right here and back in algebra what we did was we covered um okay, I'm just erasing these for now. Um what we covered in algebra was this, right? This is known as the coordinate grid. And we obviously spend a lot of time on algebra doing this. And we have the x-axis, the y-axis. What we can explore in geometry is like, there's not just a uh, 2D grid. It is possible to have um, 3D grids as well, in which you have x, y, and z. So so, so this thing right here is, is a 3D grid. And it's possible to have like 4D or 5D or however many dimensions you want, you can add them. But okay. yeah. So what is a way that, that that we can pinpoint any location on a coordinate grid? It's called a point. Whenever you have a point and you put it on, on a coordinate plane, yeah, let's just call a, a whole the, the, this whole coordinate grid. It's a two-dimensional plane. And a plane is just a location of and it's just this this 2d space right here and where it exists in space time so just this thing that stretches infinitely in all directions and, and it's two-dimensional because it stretches infinitely on the y side and it stretches infinitely on the x side so a way to pinpoint any location on this plane that's where we get into a point okay yeah and let's build on points even more if you have a point and you have another point right here and if if you connect them since this is not stretching infinitely in in all sides hold on i'm going to find an easier way to draw this um if you have two points that are just connected to each other and there's just a finite amount of space in between them this is known as a line segment So a point is just um point is a location on a plane. Um uh the the distance between two points is known as a line segment if the um if one or both of those sides do not stretch infinitely in both directions. Okay. And the let's keep going. What happens if we take this one point right here and we make it stretch infinitely? If we do that, it looks something like this. And this is called um, this is called a ray. And have you learned about the about the distance formula yet? I don't think so. Okay, so. I, I guess I got way too ahead of myself there by, by getting into rays. But first, let's say that I'm going to draw another um, 
X, Y coordinate plane. And one thing I mentioned before is with the line segment, it's very, um, it, it is possible to find the distance between these two points because the distance is not infinite. So let's say you have something like this. Um, how would we find the um, distance between these two points? So, um, how, okay, so the, the thing is the, like what we have to do with the distance formula right here is to find the shortest distance between these two points, which we're able to do. What do we know about these points? Um, we can find the slope of these points. So it's like to calculate it, to calculate it, what you do next is take the change in y, divide by change in x. The change in y is this vertical line right here. The change in x is this horizontal line right here. The the the, the changes in x and the changes in x and y are like legs of this triangle, and the diagonal is the shortest distance. So we need to find the um distance. We we need to find the length of this diagonal. And okay. we need to find the differences in the values of the x's and y's. So right. then, so then we do x two minus x one squared plus y two minus y one squared. So, so you square the change in x, and then you add it to the square of the change in y. And then after that, you would um you would take the square root of it. I guess let's provide an example with like with actual points. So let's okay. say you have three, five here, and then you have one, six. This might be messy numbers because I'm just generating them on the spot. So let's plug in. What would the change in X be? Um, uh, it would be from the point three five to the point no I, it would be from like the first point on the bottom to the point three yeah, five yeah. i think okay so what would the changes in the x values be so you you're going from three to one so that would be Oh, two. Yeah. What would the change in Y be? Um, one. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So then what do we get? We get the square root of five. And unfortunately, we can't really simplify this. So the, the distance between these two points is the, um, is, um, the square root of five. Okay. Um, I, I guess the, 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 this is just a fun little exercise that I just came up with on the spot. Let's see if we can see if there's any kind of correlation or connection between this distance and the slope of the line, right? Because we did do change in Y. We, we did deal with change in Y and change in X. So l let's see if there is any kind of correlation between these two. Um, what, what would the slope be of this line? It would be um it would be um five minus six, right? Um five minus six because that's the change in y. And then the change in x would be three minus one. So then you would get minus one over two. Yeah, there's there there's not really a correlation between the answers but but i guess you just know that the slope is negative but the distance is positive the the distance can only ever be positive because it doesn't really make sense to have a negative distance okay and that's the distance of what exactly it's the distance between these two points the shortest possible distance because if, okay. if, you, wanted, if you wanted a longer distance you could do uh the change in y is just um uh, the, the change in x is just 2 
and then the change in y is just one so like if someone were to walk from from here to here but go this way they would walk two and then they'd go up one so then the two plus one would be what three two plus one would be three what does three equal three equals the square root of nine and the the square root of nine is greater than the square root of five and the square root of five is between two and three because two is the square root of four and three is the square root of nine the square root of five is just in between so that is the shortest distance between these two points and it's always a diagonal like like this Okay. Do you want to see how, how, how the distance formula would work if you just had a straight line and not a diagonal? Yeah, sure. Yeah. So let's say you had um, a minus 5, 3, and then minus 1, 3. What, um, what would the change in x be? Um, negative six. Oh, wait, I want to be minus minus, it'd be negative four. Negative four. So what is negative four squared? That that would be 16, right? Right. And then well, what's the change in, in x? That that's just zero, right? No, no, change in y, sorry. What's the change in y? Zero. Zero, yeah. What's the square root of 16? Four. What's the distance when you eyeball it? For, for um, it, it's all, it's four. So it works. You, okay. just, you just have the possibility to get really messy numbers if you're dealing with diagonals. Right. Maybe because you don't know how many or how long they are. Uh, I, I can send you a little video I made on the distance formula, but it does reference the Pythagorean theorem. Um, have you heard of it or have you learned about it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, that sounds familiar. Huh? Okay, so yeah. um, the Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared? Yeah. We're, we're, we're basically doing the Pythagorean theorem here. Because this right here is a, this right here is b, this right here is c. Right. So, so your change in x is your a, your change in y is your b, so that's why you square them. And then that's why you take the square root of everything in the end, because you're, you have c squared. You take the um, square root of it right so if you ever find yourself forgetting to learn the the, dis the the distance formula make sure to um keep the pythagorean theorem as your guide so the i i, I guess a, a little song i guess that i wrote on that is the pythagorean theorem will be your guide the the, the differences in your values and your x's and y's when squared become a squared and b squared Add them up to get c squared. What comes next? Square root the sum, and you got the distance. That is the distance formula. I'll send you the video. And now we spent a lot of time on line segments. Let's move on to rays. A ray happens when you have a point, but then it just keeps going. So, so there's no point in the end on the other side. Right. Because of that, you can't really use the, the distance formula on it because the distance would just be infinite. Um, the next thing that we're going to have to deal with is a line. A line is just when it extends back and forth in all directions. Now let's kind of zoom in on rays a little bit. So what happens if you have, if you have two rays, but they both share the same point? You get what's called an angle. Okay, so it's made of two rays. And when you want to find out how spaced apart these rays are, this is where you get the different measures of an angle. I'm pretty sure, I guess you've heard of angles that have like 30 degrees, 60 degrees, 90 degrees. The degrees represent how far apart these two rays are. So I guess okay. some... I guess some really important angles that need that, that you need to know are like zero degrees. Uh, wait, no, give me a second. Um, if it has no measure, it's zero degrees. Uh, this thing right here looks like 30. Um, uh, this thing right here looks like 45. I, I, I guess I, I can probably 
like after a while you can kind of figure out like what the most important angles are but this is an example of a 90 degree angle okay and then do you only like measure the degree when it's um an angle made by rays well, uh, angles can only be made by rays because there's one point and then it just extends in both directions. Although you could have an angle that's made up of like line segments. Okay. The, the, I guess the important thing is, is they both share a point. For, for, for this reason, angles cannot be made up of lines. It can just be rays and line segments, but rays are the most common. But what, when you're dealing with like shapes and stuff like that, they are angles that are made up of... Um, of uh, of line segments. Okay. What do you notice about um per uh, of um 90 de 90 degree angles? It means that um Oh, hold on. But before we even get there, just to recap, parallel lines never intersect at all. Um oh. the meeting is going to end i'm going to i'm going to reopen the meeting and you can, you can come back for the for the last 20 minutes okay hello lines meanwhile perpendicular lines always intersect 